Hello, I'm Cynthia Fodor. And I'm Bill Martin. Up next on Nightbeat. This has been a fast-moving train. It, it has been almost like a brush fire. Barbara Hafer says she's close, very close, to making a run for governor. There's no more waiting, just clear sailing on the new I-279. And in the Caribbean, people braced for what could be the worst hurricane in a decade. The Nittany Lions are back on track. Derry Gunn has all the scores. And Kevin Benson tells us if we can hold off the rain tomorrow. All next on the Night Beat. Can we get serious? Girl to girl, B cup to tea cup, inner thigh to inner bean, varicose vein to migraine. And my new show will sort through the hemlines, the headlines, the stars, the bizarre, the movers, the shakers, the flakes, the fakers. Please, I am coming to your house. Coffee black, no sugar, and don't even say pastries. Introducing a daytime talk show with a sense of humor. Nobody leaves that laughing. I'm serious. The Joan Rivers Show, Monday at 10, here on Channel 11. In 1965, Janet Saner set out to destroy a myth that at age 60, your productive years are over. Saner saw a great untapped resource in our senior citizens and founded the Retired Senior Volunteer Program. Here in Pittsburgh, you can find our SVP volunteers working in our hospitals and schools and visiting in our nursing homes. They're making Pittsburgh a better place to live. Call Channel 11's Volunteer Connection in partnership with Bell of Pennsylvania, a Bell Atlantic company. So I'm looking for a phone system. And the sales guy says he's got one just right for my business. Doesn't have all the features I want. And if my business expands, I'll need a bigger system. All in all, he says, you can't find a better fit. Bell Atlantic has the widest range of phone system solutions available. So each IQ phone system is custom fit just for you. But you won't know that unless you call 1-800-444-8838. This is Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. Live from Television Hill, this is Channel 11 News Nightbeat with Bill Martin, Cynthia Fodor, Kevin Benson with the weather outside, and Derek Gunn with sports. Now, Channel 11 News Nightbeat. Hello, everyone. Thank you for staying up. I'm Bill Martin. And I'm Cynthia Fodor. Up first on Night Beat, it looks like State Auditor Barbara Hafer is inching closer to the race for governor. The former Allegheny County Commissioner says that on a scale of 1 to 10, she's 9.5 certain she'll run. That's a word tonight from Erie, where Republican leaders are meeting this weekend. The next governor of Pennsylvania, Yay! our Auditor General, Barbara Hafer. This was the scene last night in Erie where the state auditor general addressed Republicans amid calls for her run to run for governor. Today, Hafer said she still isn't ready to throw her hat into the ring. This has been a fast-moving train. It has been almost like a brush fire. At the Republican State Committee's fall meeting, Hafer said she's flattered by all of this talk, but the timing just isn't right. And you can talk to Elsie Hillman. She wanted me to announce, and she was very adamant. And I said, absolutely not. I am not ready. There are things that need to be uh, decided. Ironically, the Republicans met as pro-choice demonstrators marched at a pregnancy aid center next door. The demonstration was a coincidence, but now member Betty Young says her friends know that Hafer is pro-choice. We're aware that uh, there is talk about Barbara Hafer running for governor, and I think all of us would be very happy to have a pro-choice candidate to vote for in the gubernatorial race. One final note on this story. Today, Hafer said... Uh, she has what she calls a gut feeling that Democratic incumbent Governor Robert Casey might not seek re-election. Another toxic spill into the Yakagani River, this one associated with a train derailment in West Newton three weeks ago. It appears about 20 gallons of a hazardous chemical leaked into the river. It seems it leaked from the same tanker a toxic chemical was drained into after the train wreck. Hazmat crews now have to contend with a fish kill, and they spent the day trying to clean it up. Well, the concrete has been poured, the dirt moved, and the barriers are taken down. The new Interstate 279 is open after 40 years of planning. PennDOT opened up the final stretch this afternoon, and traffic has since then been rolling up and down the highway. Cars, vans, and buses have been driving in and out of the north side of the city tonight to get the feel of the new highway. North Hills commuters have been waiting for this 13-and-a-half-mile expressway for decades. It will make life easier for people like Ed Simon. I go out to Green Valley to golf, 
and uh, I'm out there in 10 minutes. No lights, no nothing, you know. I-279 will save time. In fact, our road test this afternoon shows it takes 40 minutes to get from the north side to Cranberry on McKnight Road and less than half that time, 18 minutes on 279. At the grand opening, the governor says the highway will spur new economic growth. We open the door to new economic growth for the city, for Allegheny County, and for all of southwestern Pennsylvania. We open the door to improve travel for the thousands of commuters who daily visit our city and other communities along the corridor. Francis Kasunik hopes it will help his business. I'm glad it's finished, and I hope it helps everybody, because we, we had a tough time staying in business in the last five years. But it's over with now, and I think it may help us in the future. To the 66,000 commuters expected to drive up and down the highway every day, it's well worth the wait and the $550 million it cost. But it may not always be smooth sailing. What motorists can expect during the rush hours is what you experience in any major American city when you take an expressway and dump it off into a central business district. You see it every day on the Parkway East and the Parkway West. That's where the point of delay and the point of congestion will be for motorists. A special lane for high occupancy vehicles like carpools will be open in about a week and a half. Meantime, teachers in an Indiana County School District headed for a strike say the walkout could be avoided if the school board negotiates tomorrow, but tonight that appears unlikely. Teachers in the Blairsville Salzburg School District say they'll strike Monday. Talks broke off yesterday and board negotiators say they won't meet tomorrow. 150 teachers and more than 2,300 students are affected. No strike in Johnstown, but a teacher is in the news tonight. Anthony D. Girolamo is being charged with using students at the Greater Johnstown Vote Tech School to sell drugs, namely LSD. Now he has been suspended from school pending the outcome of a trial. And Bill, federal drug agents now have a new weapon in their war on drugs. No, it's not a gun, a tank, or a bomb. It's a balloon, complete with a 150-mile radar radius. This $25 million balloon was launched in Texas to help keep drug smugglers from crossing the border. Two more launchings are planned, and drug agents say the balloons will spread an impenetrable radar net over the southern border. The war between the government and drug traffickers continues in Colombia. Nine people have been killed in the latest wave of violence, including two police officers. Hundreds of troops are now searching cars for guns and explosives, and U.S. citizens are leaving the country every day for fear of getting caught in the violence. Elsewhere around the world tonight, one of the first victims of Thursday's print shop massacre in Louisville, Kentucky, was buried today. James Weibel had worked in the plant for 37 years. Friends and relatives gathered to pay their respects and come to grips with this tragedy. Seven people were killed, 13 hurt when a plant worker went berserk with a gun before turning it on himself. Well, as part of a new policy not to disrupt peaceful demonstrations and gatherings, the South African government allowed thousands to stage political funerals today for four children allegedly shot by police during election violence last week. Protesters marched in the country's three biggest cities, and all of those were peaceful. At least four people have drowned from flooding in parts of West Virginia and North Carolina. In Fayetteville, North Carolina, two children were swept from their mother's arms by gushing water. Hundreds have been forced to evacuate, and about 2,000 homes are now without power. The flooding started after four inches of rain fell in just two hours, and more rain is predicted for tonight. Well, Cynthia, a more severe weather problem is bearing down on the Caribbean tonight. We're talking about Hurricane Hugo packing winds up to 140 miles an hour and described by meteorologists as extremely dangerous. Here's what it looks like in Guadalupe, where residents are scrambling to board up homes and businesses and secure their possessions. Forecasters say Hugo could be the worst hurricane to hit the region We're in a here decade. Before the hurricane, wherever that's going to be around this zone here, maybe 50 miles either side of the center of the hurricane, will have considerable impact, devastation there, water, uh, all kinds of problems in that area. Well, the last hurricane of this size to hit the Caribbean and Florida was David, which killed more than 1,000 people back in 1979. 
Well, when we come back after a kind of a goofy day weather-wise, cold, rainy things this morning. That's right. Kevin said it was going to be nice tonight. It is. Kevin, what about tomorrow? Looks like it's going to be a gradual improvement and gradual drying, folks, but I'm still hearing some thunder and seeing some lightning from our vantage point out here on Television Hill. We'll check the forecast details out next when the night beat continues. Stay with us. For more than 80 years, people have come home to homes with Anderson windows. Come home. And while times have changed, our commitment to quality and to the home has not. Which is why today, more people come home to Anderson windows than any other. Come home to quality. Come home to Anderson. Their crimes shocked and horrified a nation. Female serial killers. A nurse murders innocent babies in her care. A mother deliberately kills her own nine children. What drives these women to kill and then kill again? We'll talk to a woman on death row and the relatives of these mass murderers and their victims. How do their families deal with the pain and the shame inside the mind of female serial killers? That's the focus on the next Geraldo. Monday at 9, here on Channel 11. McDonald's and WPXI-TV have teamed up to send a different lucky couple to each of this season's Pittsburgh Steelers home games. Enter now at any participating McDonald's to win a pair of tickets for the Steelers-Cincinnati game October 8th. Winners will be announced on the October 1st Steelers 89 program. All entries must be received by WPXI-TV no later than midnight September 27th. When the game's over, a new contest begins. But every home game's a new chance to win. Stop by any participating McDonald's today to get your Steeler ticket giveaway entry. It was not your run-of-the-mill race at the USS Irwin Works this morning, but more than 1,000 runners got to see what it was like to race around a mill. They stretched their muscles for the 5K run with steel. It was all to promote steel recycling, and appropriately, the race was hosted by former steeler Mel Blunt. All in all, it was probably a great day for race because it was cool and a little misty this morning. And yeah, not all bad at all, up. Kevin. It was a little gloomy, but... That's not too bad. Yeah, a little on the gloomy side. You know, it's an interesting night weather-wise. Here in Allegheny County, it's been mainly dry tonight, folks. A little on the damp side, but not much in the way of significant rain. That is here in the city of Pittsburgh. But some of our neighbors in Fayette County and also in Westmoreland County, they got hit with some heavy downpours and some thunderstorms. And there is a flash flood warning in effect for Fayette and Westmoreland County until 3 a.m. And that means flooding is in progress or imminent. So if you live in those counties, especially in the low-lying areas, you keep an eye out tonight. That's in effect until 3 a.m. Let's go to work with our numbers here this evening. We went to a high temperature of 70 degrees. Normal high temperature would be 75 Outside on the patio here in Pittsburgh, it is 64 degrees this evening. Our low earlier this morning was 59 degrees. And I'm live outside on the north side of Pittsburgh and still seeing some lightning flashes and also hearing some thunder. So it ain't over yet, folks. You could still get hit with a heavier downpour this evening, but it will be a slow, gradual drying trend that we're in for. Temperatures now in southwestern Pennsylvania, all of them in the 60s. Down in Wheeling, it is 65 degrees and also several 63s on the board, including Newcastle, Butler, and also 63 degrees tonight in Catanning. Want to talk about the big weather story? We'll take a look at the world satellite photograph. We're talking about Hurricane Hugo. This is a significant storm, folks. The location right now is 75 miles south-southwest of Guadalupe and it's continuing to move to the west-northwest at about 12 miles per hour. The winds are sustained at 140 miles per hour, gusting as high as 160 miles per hour. This is a Category 4 hurricane, and it is described as extremely dangerous, and you'll be hearing more about this in the news because this is a very severe storm, talking about rainfall amounts as high as 5 to 10 inches in the path of this storm. You can see plenty of clouds here in the northeast, However, things are starting to clear out back here in the Plain States, and eventually as we get on into tomorrow afternoon and on into Wednesday, or I should say on into Monday through Wednesday, this whole mess will continue to move on to the east, and it'll start to dry out tomorrow afternoon, and then Monday through Wednesday, 
Look like real nice days with plenty of sunshine. Here in Pittsburgh this evening, we'll check the conditions. We're in the 60s right now, 64 degrees, winds west at 13, humidity 97%, and the pressure is rising. And here's the AccuWeather forecast now tonight. Clouds, a couple of showers, and there'll be some fog to contend with. Low is 54. For tomorrow, it starts to come around. Clouds mixed with sun, still a shower possible. Low is 72. Make that the high is 72. Tomorrow night, patchy clouds, and the low is 54 degrees. And here's a look on through the five-day forecast. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, look for a mix of clouds and sun. A pretty good week, really. Monday, 78. Tuesday, 80. Wednesday, 82. And Thursday, 84 degrees. Cynthia and Bill, I think I timed this one just right because I'm done with the forecast and it's just starting to rain on the outside. <laughs> Let's go back Good inside job, to you Kevin. guys. <laughs> and you ended it up with 80s, back in the 80s again. Yeah, That's Monday right. through Thursday look real good. Thanks, Kevin. Good, You're thank welcome. You. Well, there were two games played tonight in the Pennsylvania Lottery. Let's take a look at the winning numbers. In the daily Saturday game, those lucky numbers were 2, 1, 3. And the big four game for this September 16th, the winning numbers, 9, 3, 2-8. Hope this was a lucky Saturday for you. And in sports, Major Harris pulled him through in West Virginia today. You know, a lot of people thought West Virginia wouldn't be as good as they were last year because they lost a lot of talent, but so far they have equaled last year's uh, record at this point. In-state, Penn State with Slam Temple and out-of-state West Virginia, Wall of South Carolina. The highlights and scores of those games and more coming up next in sports. What's the difference? It takes too long to learn to use a computer. Wrong. Deskmate makes the difference with graphics that guide you. Learning new software is like starting over. Not now. Deskmate uses the same plain English commands with different programs like Lotus Spreadsheet for Deskmate. A computer? I wouldn't know what to do. Now you will. Deskmate makes the difference. Deskmate is simple. It's PC compatible. Deskmate is even easier on Tandy computers. The friendly face in the PC crowd at Radio Shack and participating dealers. Something is drastically wrong with this wall. It's empty. It's drab. It says nothing of the glory of the Pittsburgh Steelers. But with your help, this wall and others like it can be saved. Fill up your tank at Sitco, and you'll get one of six free Pittsburgh Steeler prints. Collect a different one each week. Much better. Fill up your tank at Sitco, and help us save the walls. Don't forget this. Bye-bye. Oh, I'll see you Saturday. Bye. Can you start today? If you've ever dreamed of a kitchen as beautiful as a Marilat kitchen with solid oak frames, whisper glide drawers, and a furniture quality finish, remember... I miss you. I miss you. Honey, you should see what your son did to the kitchen. Dreams do come true. Wow! A new kitchen. I hope. You did want the oak, right? Yes. Marilat, America's cabinet maker. Before you say hello to any other clearance sale, say goodbye to the real class of 89. Well, after the embarrassing loss last week, Paterno said he was going to get this team in shape, and he did. And he did whip them into shape because yeah. they were all over Temple this afternoon. Now, the Nittany Lions of Penn State were on the prowl this afternoon, and the Owls of Temple would be their victims. We go to University Park, where State came out fired up in the first offensive play from scrimmage. The Nittany Lions' Tom Bill hits Dave Daniels along the sidelines. Daniels slipped by the defender. It's over. 75 yards, touchdown. 7-0 State. Early in the second quarter, Blair Thomas, Thomas, who would have rushed for 138 yards, went in from the one to make it 14 0. Thomas scored twice in the afternoon. Later in the second, Bill takes it to the air. Daniels will be on the receiving end, and he takes it away from a defender. 21 3 at halftime, 42 3 the final. A complete turnaround for State to go to 1 and 1 after last week being upset by Virginia. I thought, generally speaking, we had a little more enthusiasm, hit a little better than we hit against Virginia. Seemed to be a little bit, have a little bit more authority on the line of scrimmage than we had last week. 
And uh, obviously we threw the ball a little better, caught it better. I get, I don't think we threw it a heck of a lot better, but we caught it better. And because we, I thought we threw pretty well last week, a little late on some things, but uh, you know, just a little bit more consistent, hard play. Now in Morgantown, it was ninth-ranked West Virginia playing South Carolina, the first regular season meeting between these two independents since 1954. And the Mountaineers would pin back the game Cox's ears. Let's check in. In the opening quarter late, Major Harris scrambles out of the pocket. He would hit Reggie Rembert in the back of the end zone for a 10-yard scoring strike, and WVU led by seven. In the second quarter at seven all, Harris fakes the handoff on the reverse, sets up, and lets it fly. A wide open Greg Dykes hauls it in and goes the distance. That play covered 51 yards, and WVU had the lead for good. Harris, who completed 17 of 20 passes for 239 yards, threw three touchdowns, and ran for another score on this three-yard effort. The Mountaineers built a 38-7 advantage, cruised to a 45-21 win. They are now 3-0, and when you have a major Harris scrambling, the opposition is usually in trouble. Just get open, because if you get open, major get you the ball. And um, that's all we do. If you're short, go deep. If you're deep, come make sure it. So just all coach tells us, major stops going to get open. That's what we try to do. It's hard to see them. You 20, 30 yards downfield, and you're looking back, you don't want to just be staring. You want to keep moving. So it's hard, kind of hard to see them. But I see them. You know, sometimes it's hard. But sometimes you only see the ball coming out of there. I think the key was, you know, the other wide receivers was, you know, making some great catches. And I think by them making some great catches, they had to, you know, slack off Reg and had to play us honestly. The big game of the day, Notre Dame in Michigan, and Notre Dame wins it 24-19. Let's check in at Ann Arbor, where Notre Dame's Rahib Ishmael gave the Wolverines fits. In the second half, Ishmael would return two kickoffs to scores, one for 88 yards, and this one covered 92. The Irish goes to 2-0 on the year, and at least for another week, proved that they are the best team in the nation. Now in Miami, the second-ranked Hurricanes blew by California. Miami quarterback Craig Erickson tossed three touchdown strikes. One here to Dale Hawkins covered 18 yards in the third. And the Canes are now unbeaten in two outings, 31-3 the finals today. Also in Nebraska, 42, Utah, 30, Auburn, 24, Southern Mississippi, 3, Clemson by 20 over Virginia Tech, Colorado beats Illinois 38-7. In Boulder, the Buffaloes' Eric Bieniemy stole the show, rushing for 100 yards and scoring twice. Plus, Bieniemy would score, uh, throw another touchdown on the halfback option to a wide-open MJ Nelson, 49 yards on this play, and Colorado crushed the Illini by 31 points. In Fayetteville, number eight Arkansas top Tulsa first half. E.D. Jackson on the pitch, gave it up to Derek Russell on the reverse, and the play worked to perfection. Russell went 30 yards to give Arkansas a 13-0 halftime lead, and the Razorbacks won it 26-7. Syracuse held off Army 10-7. It was Washington by 29 points over Purdue. Alabama 35, Memphis State 7. North Carolina State 27-17 over Wake Forest. USC leads Utah State by 21 in the third. Tennessee 28, Duke 6. It was Air Force beating Northwestern 48-31, Georgia 15, Baylor 3, UCLA is beating San Diego State by 4 in the third. Now local colleges, Edinburgh 46, New Haven 13, St. Francis 42-7 winner over Brooklyn. It was Waynesburg losing for, to uh, West Virginia Wesleyan 27-14, Westminster plus 20 over Finley, Allegheny shut out Teal 30 to nothing. California PA 43, Mansfield 41, Geneva shut out Brockport. Mercyhurst 31, Grove City 7, Carnegie Mellon 35, Chicago 8, Duquesne plus 4 over Bethany, IUP shuts out Towson State 27 0, Ashland of Ohio knocked off Slippery Rock, and it was Ferris State 41, Claris 35. At this time, the Steelers and Bengals have one thing in common. Both began the year at 1 0, or, or in 1, I should say. But one of them will get in a plus column tomorrow when they meet at Riverfront Stadium. That's a 1 p.m. kickoff right here in Channel 11. Cincinnati is favored by 10 to win that contest. Last night at the Civic Arena, the Penguins and Hartford skated to a 5-5 stalemate. But tonight in Hartford, the Whalers wailed on the pen 6-3. Troy Loney, John Cullen, and Mark Reckey scored the pen's goals. The pens will play the L.A. Kings Monday night in Cleveland. The NL East leading Cubs had been on a roll, winners of their last six, but today the Bucks slowed down the Cubs' pennant drive by taking an 8-6 to six decision. We go to Three Rivers where the Bucks got to Greg Maddox for three in the first. R.J. Reynolds delivers the big blower, ripping a two-run homer to right. That's his 12th HR of the season. Then in the bottom of the fourth at 4-4, Jose Lean would get this base hit to left center. That was in Gary Reedus to the plate with the go-ahead run to make it 5-4. And in the seventh, Reedus cracks the whip. A three-run homer to left, his sixth of the year, put the Bucks on top for good. It was their sixth win in their last seven games. All wins coming against teams still contending for post-postseason play. 
Elsewhere, Montreal by nine over the Mets. The Mets stay five and a half behind the Cubs. St. Louis and Philadelphia washed out. Also, San Diego and San Francisco rained out. Houston by two over Cincinnati. Atlanta beat Los, or should I say, in Los Angeles scoreless in the ninth. In the American League, Toronto plus one over Cleveland in 11. The second place, the Orioles were at home tonight against the Royals. Bottom of the second, ex-pirate Randy Milligan homers the left to break a 1-1 tie. That was his 12th round tripper this year. The Birds get two more in the fourth. Cal Worthington drives one deep to left. Bo Jackson scales a wall, but he can forget it. That solo shot made it 4-2. Baltimore now leading 7-5 in the ninth. The Orioles win it. They stay a game and a half behind the Jays. Milwaukee plus 2 over Texas. Boston 5. Oakland 2. It was White Sox 2-1 over California. New York 4. Seattle 1. And Minnesota an 8-7 winner over Detroit. If you're watching the Steelers-Cincinnati game tomorrow, good luck. Big game. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Can't wait. Yeah. Well, up next, most of us have played at least chopsticks on the piano. That's right, but how many of you can brag about...